a Benedictine, a Jesuit, and a Franciscan all get stranded on a desert island until they come across a lamp in the sand. Rubbing it, out pops a genie who, seeing three men, says, I will give each one of you one wish, anything that you desire. So the Jesuit jumps up first and says, oh, thank God, get me off this island. I need to be back at the university teaching, proclaiming the word. That is where I'm called. And so poof, he was gone. The Benedictine jumped up next and said, oh, thank God, get me off this island. I need to be back at the monastery where I belong, working and praying in my vow of stability. That's where my charism lies. Poof, he was gone. And so there was only the Franciscan left, looking around kind of hesitantly, knowing that he didn't need anything but holy simplicity, looked at the genie and said, you know, I kind of like those guys. Can you bring them back? A Dominican, a Franciscan, and a Jesuit go to heaven and meet Jesus sitting on his throne. He greets them warmly and says that they are invited into the kingdom of heaven as long as they share what they believe. The Dominican goes first and says that he believes in all the writings of Thomas Aquinas, the proofs for God, and all the many wonderful doctrines of the church. Pleased, Jesus lets him in. The Franciscan goes next and bowing low in humility, says that he believes in the incarnation, the word made flesh, in holy poverty that Jesus took on himself. Pleased once again, Jesus lets him in. Then, with a long pause, the Jesuit speaks up and says, well, I believe that you're in my seat. While it's often believed that God is all-knowing, the fact of the matter is that there are three things that even God doesn't know. How many congregations of women religious there are, how much money the Franciscans are hiding, and what a Jesuit's gonna do next. A Dominican and a Franciscan both die and go to heaven. Standing before the pearly gates, St. Peter checks his list and says, ah yes, here you are, both right here. Let me go make sure that your accommodations are ready. Then, all of a sudden, choirs start singing, the angels come out, and the saints start chanting the Dominican's name. St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Dominic come, along with the Virgin Mary herself, floating on a cloud. And they say, come, brother, let us introduce you to our Lord. And he flies off on the cloud with them. The Franciscan is left there alone, thinking, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I can't wait to see who comes greet me. This is the greatest thing in the whole world. And with all this anticipation, he sits there and he waits. And he waits. And an hour goes by and he starts to get a little impatient. And all of a sudden, this kind of chubby little friar comes out off the side door. And he says, ah, you're still here. Come on this way, let's go. And he says, wait, wait, wh what happened to my parade? He said, I, I was expecting Francis and Anthony and Bonaventure. And the grubby little fry says, ah, oh, you're a Franciscan. We got hundreds of those there. It's not every day we get a Dominican into heaven. A Benedictine, Franciscan, Dominican, and Jesuit were all meeting in the basement when all of a sudden, the power went out. The Benedictine, having memorized all the Psalms, began to give God praise from what he had memorized from the Bible. The Dominican began to preach about the metaphysics of light and darkness. The Franciscan gloried in the simplicity of creation, of the darkness of poverty. And the Jesuit went up to the fuse box and fixed the light. A Franciscan and a Jesuit were out golfing one day when they came upon an extremely slow grouping in front of them. They felt that it was rude and so they called the manager complaining. The manager said, I'm sorry, if you could have a little patience, that whole grouping is blind. The Franciscan felt horrible that he had acted not in humility, but very proud and began to do penance. The Jesuit, on the other hand, responded to the manager asking, why don't you just make them play at night? A man approaches a Franciscan and says, Father, I really want a Mercedes. If I pray a novena, will God give it to me? Looking confused, the Franciscan looks back and says, I'm sorry, what's a Mercedes? So the man moves on to a Jesuit and asks the same question. Father, I really want a Mercedes. If I pray a novena, will God give it to me? Looking equally as confused, the Jesuit responds, I'm sorry, what's a novena? So the man moves on to a diocesan priest and asks the same question. Father, I really want a Mercedes. If I pray a novena, will God give it to me? Looking back at the man and smiling, the diocesan priest says, well, that's how I got mine. One day in heaven, Saints Dominic, Benedict, Ignatius of Loyola, and Francis of Assisi were all arguing over whose charism was the most primitive to God. St. Dominic spoke up first saying that in the Gospel of John we hear that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made flesh, and since we are the preachers of the Word, we are first. 
Saint Benedict jumped up next and says, yes, but even before the incarnation, there was the garden. And in the garden, there was nothing but work and prayer, meaning that our charism was before that. Saint Ignatius of Loyola stood up and said, yes, but even before the garden, even before all of creation, there was nothing but chaos and God brought order to that chaos. We bring order and so our charism is first. Then finally, Saint Francis stood up and with a smile on his face, he said, yes, you are right. Before order was chaos. And so therefore, we, the Franciscans, are first.